Hey there and welcome back. It's Eva from the Essential Guide to Digital Jewelry Design and today we're going to do something uh, that's going to take a bit longer. Uh, this is a bit of a long video uh, but bear with me. It's all worth it in the end. So uh, what we're looking at today is a dome textured ring. So we're going to start off by making a circle for our ring size uh, in our front viewport. Uh, 52, 54, whatever circumference you feel comfortable with. And um, I'm going to make an offset of that ring curve. That offset will be around about one and a half millimeters. That's a good size for the inside of the hand. So it's not too uncomfortable when you wear the ring. Just measure that out uh, with our dimension tools. Okay, that looks good. Now I'm going to select the top points and I'm going to create the shape for our dome ring, kind of like the silhouette, if you want to call it that. Uh, look at the size there as well. Don't go too high. I'd say nine millimeters is, is good for a dome ring, uh, anywhere from seven to eight. You start getting a bit too big from about 10 millimeters on, be, be really heavy. So um, I'm going to go with nine. I'm going to rebuild this curve using our rebuild curve tool. Um, here I'm just going to put in about eight points for the, the point count and uh, three is the degree of curve that I want. It's good. And I'm going to cut this curve in half with a cut plane so that I can mirror it over because with the rebuilt curve it's not exactly the same on both sides, not a symmetric curve. So here with a cut plane I'm going to just trim off the one side of the curve and I'm going to mirror that curve over to the other side. So I can have a look at the continuity of the curves at the top and the bottom. Uh, just straighten out a couple of points there until I'm happy with it. So now we have got a nice silhouette for a dome ring. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to alt rotate that one curve uh, 90 degrees. I'm going to do the, the profile silhouette for the other side and why I'm going to do that I didn't copy that let me copy that with another rotation okay there we go when you're working with rings or generally with a piece of jewelry that's symmetrical it's good to try and bring it down to quarter or half it generally cuts down on your modeling time um, okay and here we create the curve for the profile for a network curve. We're going to use a network curve tool to create the surface. So I'm just going to push my points a little bit to the edges so that I have a good continuity and how to check that is by mirroring the curve onto the other side. You can alter the one curve and, and get a good idea if there's a continuity happening happening through to the other the other side of the curve. When I'm happy with that, do the other end. And now we're ready to do a network curve with these three curves. So I'll delete the other curves on the other side. I don't need those. I just need these three curves. So let's go get our network curve tool. And the settings, keep them as simple as possible, but use your position on the A and C points so that it's as close, following as close the curve as possible. So now we can go and mirror the surface. And once we've mirrored the surface over and we've got four, four quarters, I'm going to extrude the ring size curve and I'm going to start creating the shape of the dome ring around the shank of the ring. So we'll take the ring size curve. Oh wait, I'm, I'm just going to merge the surface here first. There we go. So now we have one surface on one side. Extrude our ring size. And we can start looking at the shape of this ring around the shank, around the fingers. I'm going to mirror that again so that I get a, a 
a good overall feeling of how this ring would look when it's finished. And I'm going to turn the points on, the control points on for the surface. So here were the control points, you can do a little bit of editing. And because the surface was created with a network uh, surface curve tool, a network surface tool, it's, we used very simple settings so that there's not too many points on the surface and uh, there wouldn't be too much deformation or in the, in the surface if you had to just say take three points. So just moving these points in a bit to create a more sleek shank. The points down here, just these three points, we move those in a bit and adjust them, not the inside one, just the three outside ones. Yeah, those. Okay, that's okay. You can edit this a bit more if you want. It all depends on what you want the shank to look like. Um, with a dome ring, I like it if the, the dome kind of follows through into the shank so you, you feel like the dome ring was cut out of a out of a, a, a organic dome like surface that's my preference you might have other ideas for your design and once you're happy there you go now what we will do is we'll join our two halves and we are going to bullion our bullion our cylinder out of this and there we go your dome ring is basically finished. Now, what we're going to do next is we're going to explode our dome ring and we are going to take the outside surface of that ring and what we traditionally would have done, so I'm just going to edit that shank at the bottom there a little bit. I'm not happy with the fact that it's standing out. Just use the inside surface to, to trim away that, that little bit. Now what, what we generally do is we would extract the outside surface of the string and we would create UV curves from that using our apply UV curves tool, create UV curves tool. And once we flattened that surface, we would do our texture pattern on that flattened surface and flow it back onto our ring uh, surface again. But when we take a look, let's have a look here. I'm just going to create a couple of spheres on the surface of this flattened flattened out uh, 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 ring surface. A couple of spheres, put one here, I'm just going to alt click and copy a few of those around that area and we're going to take those five spheres and use the flow along surface deformation tool to place those onto our dome drink surface and then we'll have a look and see what happens now this is a bit unpredictable um, when you're working with the entire dome ring surface this can become a problem uh, knowing what your end result is going to be. So instead of using the whole surface of the dome ring, I am going to cut this dome ring surface in half and I'm going to flow the texture that we're going to use around that. Now texture we're going to use today is special. It is complementary of our other co-author from the Essential Guide to Digital Jewelry Design, Atsuyo Nakajima from Tokyo. He has a website called Applecraft and they are so kind as to have provided uh, some textures downloadable for free on their website. Um, I have one here called Hashi Nosu 
which I'm going to use to create the surface with. And uh, I'm just going to open it up here for a moment and show you what that surface looks like. This is the definition. Don't be frightened off by the Japanese. I will show you a trick for that. So here we go. Here is their website, applicraft.com. And they have here about eight, nine, I think ten document, uh, document uh, definitions of grasshopper that one can download and can use for free and to learn with as well if you want to see how it's been done. Here you see some examples. And the one that I've chosen for today's tutorial. And so if you want to translate this website to English, you can use the uh, Google Translate. I have been using a Brave browser and with Brave it, it translates the website to whatever language you want it to. Which is quite handy. So head on over to applicraft.com and you'll see the samples. So what I will do now for the definition is I'll head on over to Google Translate and I will enter the Japanese text and just copy it on over into English. And copy it back into my definition window. This is if you want to understand exactly what's happening in the definition. Um, for this particular tutorial, I'm not going to use the entire definition. All I need is the steps one and two. So step one is the pattern condition, the settings for creating the pattern. And step two is the surface control. So the settings for the uh, surf surface morph of bringing the texture onto the surface. So for this particular tutorial, I, you can see I translated it all to English. And um, I'll just be using the top two groups on all three windows. The bottom is just for display. So I'm going to disable, or as you might see, I have disabled a few of my components. Uh, the only one that will be necessary for this tutorial will be the final one where the, generate, the, the, the pattern is generated on my surface. Uh, that's this component right here. I'm just going to disable the, the other ones that I don't need. And if I right click and preview my surface, yeah, I can see the just just the, the component needed. I'm gonna need to open this grasshopper file in my dome ring uh, window. So here you can see a pattern. Uh, the pattern update every time you make changes to your uh, pattern just uh, press the play button on your component to get a the the, the an updated result you can change the height under your step two the height of the document uh, the height of the pattern uh, whether it's 0.2 millimeters or 0.3 or 0.4 or maybe may make it very shallow and you can see the finished result of 0 0.2 millimeters let's go back into my document uh, the dome ring document and let's open this grasshopper file up in there and first thing I'm going to do is under my surfaces I'm going to I'm going to input my dome ring surface uh, 
going to input my dome ring surface into the fifth surface. And there we go. Now, looking at the surface, we can apply different patterns. So we can go to our pattern condition settings and just change a couple of things like, for instance, the X direction repetitions, make that 24. Uh, change the top scale factor to 0 0.4, make it a bit bigger, and just do a little seed change on our pattern and press play and watch that update. And again, I'm going to fast forward. Otherwise, you're going to have to wait a while for my computer to compute. And there we go. Here we've got something different. Now, something to keep in mind. Very often with grasshopper definitions, they look really cool, but they create a lot of complications in our models uh, that are very difficult to print or to prepare for any kind of 3D print or production. Here you can see there's some aberrations on the polygons. Uh, just doesn't always work out really well. So what I've decided to do is do this pattern on half the ring instead of the whole ring. The main problem being the points on the polar regions of the ring that join. So we we'll just cut that surface in half and I'm going to use the shrink to trim surface command to uh, shrink my control points to the actual edge of the surface. As you see here, uh, the control points on the other side will disappear. And we will use this surface to create the pattern so that we can make some alterations that will make it easier to produce the ring for real. Uh, so I'm just going to rebuild the surface so that it doesn't have the hole in it anymore and make it even simpler. Just using UV of 9 and 9. And I'm going to input the surface into our surface uh, component on the on the grasshopper definition. I'm going to enable the other component that I disabled. And here we go. It computes a lot faster. And we can see we've still got an aberration here at the poles of the surface. But we're going to take care of that with a very simple method. I'm just going to use trim and trim a cylinder away from that. We'll trim those intersecting surfaces out and we'll just be putting two little diamonds, one on top and one at the bottom. It'll be a nice finishing off of the ring. So we've baked the pattern out. And now we're going to do a little trim. So I'm just going to use the trim tool. And um, what I've done is I have exploded my surface so that I only select the few surfaces that are surrounding the cylinder area. So once that that section has been trimmed with the cylinder. Um, just deselect everything around the outside of the cylinder and you can delete the surfaces inside. And we'll go down 
to the base of our surface and do it there too. So now what you've got here is you've got a little, a little cutout section where none of the surfaces are overlapping or intersecting. So let's do that on the other side and, and I've just fast forwarded and uh, you'll see here I've done it on both ends and um, well I'm going to show you a little trick that you might not know in Rhino but if I mirror the one side over to the other side and we join these two parts um, wait a second I see here this has not been cut properly okay so we're just going to take cutting plane and stretch out a cutting plane on our X axis and trim away those little pieces. I'm just going to create a cut plane from the zero out onto the X. Just trim those little parts away. And, and then we can mirror the surface over nicely and join that and then what we have are two openings on the on the head and on the base and what you can do with that is you can create a cylinder that literally runs through that hole and even though the surface is an open poly surface, not closed, not airtight. Very often, not always, but very often, when you bullion these things together, it will work. So let's give it a shot here. Taking that cylinder and moving it up. So that cylinder is just over where the parts are cut away. And we just grab our bullion union tool and let's fire away. So let's watch this. And there you go. We have one closed valid poly surface. It's watertight. There you see the poly surfaces are joined nicely. If I go into my surface, you'll see uh, there's no more cylinder. It's literally created one solid closed object okay great now for the final touch what i'm going to do is bang out that ring size from the inside of our ring we do a bullion difference with the the, the ring size extrusion and there we go an old service inside there I'm just gonna switch that switch that layer off okay that was our surface that we did the flow on and next thing we're gonna need to do is duplicate our ring scale it towards the inside and using your ghosted uh, shader method your ghosted shade viewport we are going to determine that we have about a say a millimeter at the most a millimeter thickness within the object uh, you could try your luck with the shell command i think that this is a bit too complex an object to to use the shell command for but anyways if you want to give it a give it a whack but this is a very simple method of hollowing out a complicated ring surface. But we still have the little cylinder sticking out the top and the bottom, so we need to get rid of that. Uh, for this, I'm just going to use a cut plane again. We'll just pop in a cut plane close to the top and close to the bottom. And Boolean difference those away. Flip that surface over. Yeah. 
and chop those pieces off. There we go. And now we just bullion difference that inside ring out of the main out of the main ring. There you go. It's a nice hollow. A nice hollowing out. Super. Okay, for those of you who are OCD and cannot handle the seam I created on that textured ring, you can obviously play with a pattern in Grasshopper so that you have as close as possible a finished, completed side and uh, not a half pattern on the edges. Um, now what I'm doing is I'm going to cut away the cylinders on top and bottom as well. And I'm going to set two little stones in there and this is just my way of finishing it off adding a little bit of detail uh, I'm going to run a gold uh, grasshopper gold sorry it's a great great little grasshopper plug in this and we'll just pop one on the bottom as well. We'll grab a cutting tool for the stones. We'll make sure that those cutting tools work their way through the entirety of the of the shank and you don't have a just a half a hole halfway through. And uh, there you go. We render that baby up. And this is 3D printable and ready to be produced. So I, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. It's a bit of a long one. Thank you for, thank you for your patience sticking it through. And um, we'll be coming up with the next one shortly from Akio that'll be doing bead settings and bright cut. That's pretty exciting. So stick around and um, we'll be loading that one up in at least a day or two. And uh, do remember to hit that like button and thank you so much for supporting our channel. Have a great day.